What's going on guys, Mickle here, and wow, there is never a boring day in the world of XRP. In this video, I have some super critical updates to bring you guys on the health of the XRP ledger, what's going on in the Ripple SEC case right now, what is the SEC saying to investors like you and me, but also a super bullish article directly linking Ripple to the US Federal Reserve. You guys are not going to want to miss that one. Guys, I'm also going to get into some technical analysis at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Guys, if you are new to this channel or come here all the time, make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to my channel. It's going to help me out so much in the YouTube algorithm and help more people like you see this video. Anyway, with that said, let's jump right into it and I hope you enjoy the content. Alrighty guys, I wanted to start this video just with a quick segment on the health of the XRP ledger right now. There's been a ton of buzz about this on Twitter. I just want to give you guys a simple answer to what we're seeing right now and what we can do as a community to make sure issues like this don't come back up in the future. So Nick B, who's a Ripple developer, said there are things that Ripple team could and should have done better, and that includes monitoring of our own infrastructure. We stepped up our game and are pushing hard, but the inevitable truth is that we are all behind the eight ball and it's an uphill battle. I believe these problems are trackable. There's amazing depth of talent both within Ripple and more importantly outside of it in the broader community as highlighted by the fact that Weed C and Co. have been able to work around many of these issues in near record time. But it's an uphill battle and it will take time and effort. The latter isn't a problem, but I suspect the former is, meaning there's no shortage of effort going into this issue right now, but it is an issue that needs to be fixed. It's important to point out that while there was a lot of congestion on the ledger that caused things to be more expensive and take longer than normal, the ledger was still 100% up and transactions were still going through. This is why this technology is so significant. Even when you have a massive problem like we're seeing right now, everything is still 100% up and running. Things just aren't working exactly the way they're supposed to. If we take a look at what David Schwartz had to say about this, he said, I'm in Antarctica, so likely not much help and then says I'm more worried about killer whales so I think this really speaks to the issues we're seeing right now the XRP ledger is really David Schwartz's baby and if it was a massive problem I'm sure he'd be there to fix it in an instant this is really just a small bug in the code that caused some hiccups in the XRP ledger but it seems to me like the worst of this problem is really behind us and now that this problem has been identified it's really all about preventing stuff like this happening from the future it seems like the most important thing that Ripple's going to do is help increase the node infrastructure so that if certain nodes get more congested in the congested in the future, there will be more online to help relay, relay the information to the XRP ledger. It's important to note that the XRP ledger was never overwhelmed in this entire thing. It was really the code that uh, powers the nodes that relay the information to the ledger that were having a small bug and causing the bulk of the issues. If we take a look at what's happening uh, based on what XRP Labs has put out, they're essentially saying right now that the um, XRP ledger is completely operational, up working like normal. The only thing we're seeing now is there's a nominal increase in the transaction fee. Typically, a normal transaction fee is 0.000012 XRP, and now it's going to cost you point. 00015 XRP, which is an increase of 150 drops. This is clearly very small. It's a hiccup in a very powerful network. When you have technology that's run like this for 10 years, you are going to have hiccups. It's important to note that we're moving on from this, and it was really just a small bug that caused the ledger to not run 100% optimally, but Either way, it's no deal breaker. It's nothing we should be too concerned about. And I think that's highlighted by how great the Ripple and uh, XRP developer community is, has been and how fast they were able to address this and get everything fully functional like it should be. We can see right here, I have a pretty funny meme to bring you and it says hard to swallow pills, elevated XRP fees still being 6,000% cheaper than Ethereum's. I thought this was pretty funny because everyone's freaking out like, oh no, the fees are a little higher. 
There's still fractions of a penny. It doesn't make any difference for the average person just sending XRP back and forth. So I think this just really shows that while this wasn't the best thing to happen, it's important what we can learn from it and how we can prevent this from happening in the future. What me and you can do to help prevent this ha from happening in the future is not participating or spreading pointless trust lines around. What I mean by this is projects that are really just like scam tokens, things that are really just developers trying to make a quick buck and aren't long-term projects being dealt on the XRP ledger. These are projects that can create tra uh, congestion on the nodes. And so if you want something small, me and you can do, is just to only pick the projects and participate in the trust lines you know are going to be long-term solutions on the XRP ledger and are going to be projects that not only build on the XRP ledger, but also give back to it and care about the health of the ecosystem. Jeremy O'Leary switching to different news, and this really has to do with the SEC. He said, thank you for your continued uh, leadership to Hester Peirce. He says, people find value in using tools like stablecoins and in decentralized finance. So we should take care not to use regulation to force them into our comfort zone by, for example, replacing stablecoins with central bank digital currencies. I think this is really important because I actually watched an entire uh, conference by the SEC today, and it seemed like most of them really understood the power of of blockchain technology and are slowly moving to the idea that we don't want to force this technology into our regulation. We want to create regulation around the technology like like bumps on a road to keep the cars in the right place, but you don't want to force the cars to go to where you want them to go because that defeats the purpose of the roads. Just like if you create regulation to con completely control the technology, it's going to defeat the purpose of the underlying technology. It seems to me like they're starting to get it. There's st it's still clearly an uphill battle. Things aren't perfect. We're still in a crappy situation with Ripple, but I think we're really going to start moving to a better place, and it's going to take things like the Ripple SEC lawsuit to help put agencies like the SEC in their place and limit their power in the future. This is a video I wanted to show you guys quick. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I thought it was super powerful and this was actually the most important, I thought, segment of the conference that I was watching today put on by the SEC. Thank you. Um, I just think that, that what we've heard today has been very brave. It, it, it's hard to put a policy proposal on the table in an environment like this, politicized environment like we, we all live in today. So what Chairman Massad has done, what uh, Commissioner Peirce has done to put an idea on the table and say, I'm reaching my hand across, is somebody willing to start a discussion with me is a very brave thing, a very useful thing. In our capacity as advising the SEC, giving the SEC advice, here's what I'd say. Take that opportunity, reach out to that hand, because aggressive application of the Howey test could potentially blow up in your face. I mean, the Howey test, simply put, relies on, it requires that you're relying solely on the efforts of others, solely. Very important word in the Howey test. Some cases later watered that down to primarily, not the Supreme Court, other courts. Now the SEC's approach is any efforts by a third party make you a security. And Kristen's already talked about how that's a non-fit. I mean, it's, it's, it's only a small step away from SCOTUS giving you an opinion that totally changes the landscape and you wish you would have engaged. Um, I guess I just, and I'm curious to learn more about how that kind of aggressive approach to Howie is short-sighted and how um, a look at SROs or an exemptive. So I thought that was pretty interesting. He really brings up a super critical point. He says the Howey test was specifically stated that if a uh, something like a cryptocurrency solely depends on another participant, then that would make it a security. We know that these cryptocurrencies are driven by massive uh, decentralized communities. And I think he's making a great point that the SEC needs to understand that these cryptocurrencies are new technologies and aren't going to just perfectly fit into the frameworks we've seen in the past. I think it's very important that this was being said in an a actual SEC uh, presentation. And we know that the more and more these regulators hear these things, Despite what a lot of you think, I do think the SEC really will 
at some point figure out what regulation needs to be put in place to not destroy the industry. They do not want this industry developing in other countries. So if more people in the SEC can be informed by smart people like this guy talking, I think it's going to put us all in a better place for the future. And I think Ripple's in the process of really paving those roads right now. And although it's not fun being in this lawsuit, I think it was a necessary step to bring clarity to this entire market. This is a tweet by John Deaton, and this is a little PSA that I just wanted to bring you guys. He said, everyone should be aware that it is unlikely that the public will hear or anything on December 6th. And this is uh, pertaining to these questions that the SEC needs to answer about Ripple, such as the SEC has to answer to whether the XRPO was fully functional when XRP was distributed in 2013, has to give specific contracts in which XRP sold uh xrp directly to investors and specifically stated that they got a share in ripple they're all questions the sec can't answer they're gonna have to bs their way through it although i'd love to see the answers to these questions i don't think we will i thought for a little bit that this might cause a settlement if these answers had to be public john Deaton saying they won't be they just have to answer them to ripple so it's something to keep in mind but i think the sec will drag the lawsuit past this and kind of just hand over some bs answers to ripple hopefully we get to see them one day maybe we won't i just wanted to let you guys know that you shouldn't be expecting to see them just a little update the last thing i want to bring you which is really some older news is this is the u.s faster payments council cross-border faster payments white paper and this is directly put out by the fed and the fed created a team of different companies that they believe could help them upgrade their infrastructure to create a payment system that is operating 24 7 hour 24 day 24 hours a day seven days a week and pretty much make it so it's instant settlement you don't have to move money around electronically and then settle it on the back end it's moving value over the internet the way information does right now and if we take a look on the list there is one cryptocurrency company on the entire list that is ripple guys that lets you know everything you're watching in the sec right now is a total hoax it's bringing clarity to a market that doesn't have it we know ripple is already going to be a massive player in the future financial system they're linked to the big Biggest banks in the entire world, central banks, governments, and even the owned U.S. Federal Reserve. If that doesn't give you confidence, guys, I don't know what will. If we take a look at the price right now, we can see, and this is the last thing I wanted to bring you guys, just a quick update because there's nothing too important happening right now, that the price is currently hanging around this 97 cents range. We really want to see it move back up above this resistance line now we'd like it to be support i think it will i think we need some relief from the rest of the market to help us move back into the symmetrical triangle once we're back in there it's really game on i don't think we're coming back out of the symmetrical triangle and i'm really excited for us to start moving back to this top support line and that's when we can start getting really excited about a massive breakout that i believe will take us well past all-time highs and very quickly to the about the ten dollar range this is where I feel XRP would once again be fairly valued in this market. I'm super excited to see us there. I know we're going to have a ton of fun and making following XRP won't be as stressful then. But guys, just think about this. There's way more time to accumulate XRP right now. Your bag should be growing by the day. We are going to be on the right side of history when this is done. Thank you guys so much for coming. Make sure you follow me down on Twitter. Links in the description. For now, Mickle out.